to you today about WordPress managed hosting. And pretty much everyone here has a website, I'm sure, or you're looking at making a website with WordPress, be it on WordPress.com or self-hosting. So managed hosting is not exactly a new concept, but it's relatively new enough that when I tell it to people that there is this thing called managed hosting, there's always a pause and they go, is that what I already have? And the answer really is not exactly. Um, my slides are up. They're on health.us, WC2013. Uh, that'll redirect you actually to my website where the slides can be found, I'm downloaded, interviewed at any time. There is Benedict Cumberbatch later on. So who am I? Um, I always like to tell people who I am because it does sort of give you a grounding that I do know quite a bit about WordPress and... Is your microphone on? I don't. Turn on the, on the thing. Is my microphone Perhaps it would help if my microphone was on. Is that better? Okay, sorry. I've done a couple of talks where there was no mic, so I just kind of got used to projecting. So um, I work for DreamHost. I am their WordPress support specialist and manager. Uh, specifically right now, I'm the manager of a product we have called DreamPress, which is WordPress managed hosting. But I'm not here to talk about that in specific. Uh, I like to say that this may annoy my managers and my bosses, but I don't care who you host with so long as you're happy and your needs are being met. And what I want to talk today about managed hosting is how to make sure that that will meet your needs, what you need to have in order to run your own site. See, no matter how we come to have a website, we're all going to reach this moment where something's not right, something doesn't work right, something doesn't feel right, you're annoyed that your site is slow perhaps. And we have to understand that changing the kind of hosts that we have is going to help this in a way that plugins and themes and all the optimization that we can try to do just isn't going to be able to do. But before I get into my story about two people and how they decided whether or not they need WordPress managed hosting, because I'm not going to do that away yet. Um, I'm going to tell you a dirty little secret about web hosting, and it's about what a VPS is. So shared hosting. Shared hosting is what 99% of us have started with when we made our own website that wasn't on WordPress.com. We share it with a lot of people. We know that it's limited. So when people upgrade from shared hosting, traditionally, your first step is to go to a VPS, a virtual private server. And really, this is a fantastic thing. It's great. It gives you a lot more power and a lot more flexibility. But here's the dirty little secret about it, because we're letting you install things like Image Magic and Memcache. We're letting you install it. When we say we have a VPS that is managed, the vast majority of hosts do not mean we're going to be sitting there installing things for you, but if you decide you need something, you have the ability to install it. We're managing the hardware. We're going to manage the electricity. We're going to manage the operating system, but all those extra doohickeys and features that you really want to take your site to that next level, those are yours. And that's a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, I once said to somebody, you know, you've got a VPS and you want image magic, but here's how you install it. And she looked at me and she said, I don't know how to do this. Now, she's a fantastic developer. She's a programmer. She writes VB code that just blows my mind. And she looked at the server and she said, this is a foreign language to me. I don't want to learn this. And there's nothing wrong with saying that. I'm a developer. I program. I cannot design my way out of a paper bag. I know this. It's OK for me to turn to someone and say, this is something I don't know how to do. And not only that, I don't really want to have to learn it. And this is where WordPress managed servers are going to come in. Managed hosting for WordPress is tuned for WordPress. A lot of times I help people with multi-site more than anything else, and I tell them, oh, you're looking at your website and your subsites don't have any CSS styling? Open up your server, go look at your httpd.com file and see if allow override is set to all or options all. If you don't know what that means, please ask your host. They hate that I answer that. It is the correct answer for the problem, but a lot of people are like, well, wait, I know WordPress, now you're telling me I have to know server. What if I told you that WordPress managed hosting, you won't have to worry about that. They take care of those things for you. That gets their attention. Now, of course, there are going to be limitations. I will get into this a little bit later. But there are also, in order to give you this managed experience, we're taking away root. You can't log in and install ImageMagic or Memcache. You'll have to ask them if they can do it or if they support it. 
It's not shared though, you're on a VPS, so you're not gonna have that noisy neighbor problem where that one guy got hit by Reddit and all of a sudden your site goes down and you didn't do anything. Which is possibly the most annoying thing ever about shared host. And for the majority of our managed hosts, this is going to be faster than shared and about the same as a VPS. Some of them are actually gonna be faster than their entry level VPSs, which is really awesome when you think about it. You're gonna be paying less and getting more and have less responsibility. It kind of sounds like a magic bullet, and I know that people are really suspicious of this. So I want to tell you a story, because I feel that people really learn things and they remember things by stories. It's like we all can memorize songs when we were, you know, we all memorize songs now, but when we were in school and they're like, well, you have to memorize this sonnet. It was a little bit harder because there wasn't a story really going along with it, and songs tell stories. So I'm going to tell you a story. No, I'm going to tell you a tale of two servers. You really didn't know, I, you had to know I was going here with this one. Um, this is the classic comic. My father introduced me to literature through classic comics when I was a child because I was impatient. And <laughs> this worked really well for me. I read A Tale of Two Cities and I loved it. When I read the book when I was 10, I really hated it. And I reread it again when I was older and I find it far more interesting now. So I'm going to give you A Tale of Two Servers. I've got two people for you. Hypothetical people, Charles Darnay, Sidney Carlton. If you read the book, you know exactly who I'm talking about. These are two webmasters. They're both alike in dignity. Uh, that's not right, isn't it? That's Shakespeare. Excuse me. <clears throat> so we've got Charles and Sidney, and they've each got their own website that talks about very similar things, but in completely different ways. Much like you probably have a website that's very similar to yours, but at the same time completely different. That's what we have here. They're both looking to the future, because what they have now, maybe it's not right, maybe they're not feeling great, and they want to understand where they're going to go to by understanding where they are now. So let's meet our people. We have Charles Darnay. Charles Darnay runs a website called Dickens Lit. He likes to give nice literature discussions and essays and talk about Charles Dickens. And now Charles, he's the kind of lucky guy that we all wish we were when we started our website. He got money, he has a VPS. He started on these great big servers. He didn't have to worry about neighbors or any of that stuff. Plus he knew a WordPress expert who he hired and he had a beautiful website designed by people that he hired. He knew how to get started. He was able to get there from day one. Now on the other hand, we have Sydney. Sydney's a do-it-yourself kind of girl. She started with GSAs. And then she thought, you know what, this really isn't meeting my needs. I need a web host. I don't have a big budget. I'm still in school. I'm going to go with shared hosting. It's relatively inexpensive. She's the do-it-yourself girl who figured out plugins. She figured out caching. And she's been keeping up with everything on her community site where she likes to talk about the devil and Dickens. I have completely made these up. If these websites actually exist, I'm very sorry for the traffic I've just sent you. <laughs> so we'll talk about Charles first. He knew how to make a good website. He knew what he was aiming at. He did it really well, too. Uh, he worked with a good theme, a good developer, and he had a server admin, which meant that starting from the very beginning, he was optimized to go forth and take care of everything. And people said, hey, this might be a little bit of overkill for this nice little literary site, but he kind of had this idea that he knew that this site was going to take off one day because colleges were going to start referencing him, and he was right. He started getting traffic, and everything was building up. And now it's building up to a point that maybe just having some plugins and having the metacache and stuff isn't going to work right now because he's getting a lot more. That was the wrong key. He's getting a lot more traffic, and his web server, even his VPS, isn't quite tuned right to handle WordPress. And for Sydney, she's having an even harder time with all this because, yeah, she started on GeoCities in college and she's built herself up by her bootstraps, but now she's getting a lot more traffic, and her site's getting slow, and the server's crashing, and she's the noisy neighbor, which is the last thing you ever want to hear. If you thought that having a noisy neighbor on your server was a horrible thing, I had been the noisy neighbor. I took down an entire shared server <laughs> with a WordPress install that had no caching. This was WordPress 2.1, so it was quite a while ago. It got to the point that I had to uninstall WordPress, go back to a static HTML site until I figured out what the heck I had just done to crash this. I didn't even have that much traffic, I just built it badly. Sydney might be based on someone. 
who knows how hard it is to get to where you need to be eventually. But she'd done everything by trial and error, and her site's still having problems. It's still crashing. She needs to consider, I need that next step. What's it going to be? So let's talk about Dickens' lid. Uh, he's going tr- to look at trading a VPS for a managed WordPress solution. It's a pretty big jump. In fact, to a lot of people, that sounded like he was going to take a jump backwards. He's going to give things up to get more. And let's see if this is actually the idea, because Charles was doing great. You know, He's got good SEO. He's got good visibility. All of a sudden, this website called, oh no, they didn't. I don't know if you've heard of it. I, I love looking at some of the crazy stuff that they post. But they announced that they're going to make a new movie about Tale of Two Cities. All of a sudden, his site was inundated by the people who were all about Tumblr and memes, and they wanted to read about Dickens and comment about it, and he was not prepared for this level or this type of traffic. And worse, he'd optimized his site to be read, not to be interactive, because he was writing a literary site. People don't generally come and read a whole bunch of comments, but now he's got comments up the wazoo and doesn't know what to do. He just wants to post these nice long essays about Dickens. The problem that he faced was that he was outgrowing his server because of how he had designed both the server and the site. Or maybe we should say he was outgrowing his services on the server. But basically, things aren't keeping up anymore, and he has a couple of options. One is certainly, yeah, we can throw more money at it. I can get a bigger server with more memory, with more disk space, with more CPU, more resources. And that is certainly an option. But is it his best option? He's busy. He's got a lot to do besides just the site that he's running. And worse, the server admin that he's hired, like most of us, he's hired someone who does this as one of their many jobs. And the server admin, thankfully, said to him, you know what, there's something you need to know. I understand memcache, and I understand APC, but I heard that they're going to be doing the Zend Optimizer caching in PHP starting with 5.5, and I don't know what that is. I haven't had the time to sit and study it and learn it. I'm probably not going to be the best person to handle that for you. Worse, I don't know what Varnish is. Varnish is a great big caching thing. It's relatively new and popular. And his server admin just stepped up and said, I don't know what it is. This happens. We can't all be experts at everything at the same time. Sometimes we grow and change. And sometimes we grow faster than we're prepared for. And we lose the information. And Charles was finding this happen to him. So he made a couple of bad choices. He tried out Twitter and Tumblr, some other things to kind of bleed his traffic off his site so that he could distract these people who wanted to talk about how cute the guy was that was cast to play, you know, various characters. And that's a problem because what's the one thing you don't want to do on your website? You don't want to send people away. (laughs) The whole point is you want them to come here. And he realized, oh my god, I've just hurt my SEO by sending all these people away. That's a cardinal sin when it comes to running a website. Keep your traffic. Well, all right. Let's put your money where your mouth is, Charles. You're rich. Let's think about what your alternatives are. His hosting with a managed server might cost him as much as he's paying out for his DPS. It might cost him more, depending on what he needs. But you're going to actually get a little bit more bang for your buck. Because, well, he doesn't have a managed DPS anymore. He has one where he doesn't have root access. He doesn't need a server admin anymore, which kind of sucked for the server admin. But on the other hand, it's better for both of them because now the server admin isn't stuck supporting a site that they don't really get. And Charles isn't being frustrated because he's always trying to get something fixed that he doesn't understand. So the managed WordPress service, this is going to take care of everything for him. And then his WordPress admin, because he had one, pointed out, you know, these managed WordPress hosts, I've heard that the majority of them like to use things like Nginx and Varnish in front to take care of caching so you don't have to use a plugin. And Charles said, well, why would I not want to use a plugin? Isn't a plugin how you get things done in WordPress? Isn't that what you've been telling me for the last year or so? And his WordPress admin said, well, this is true. Plugins are how we get things done in WordPress. But what if I told you I could take the weight off of WordPress and make it run faster by putting the caching on a server in front of it? Charles thought about that for a minute, and he said, well, the less plugins we have on WordPress, theoretically, the faster it should run, and if I can keep caching 
and have the benefit of that plugin, wouldn't that be a good thing? And it would. So Varnish is going to cache my data before it gets pulled from WordPress, and only when it expires, or I tell it to expire, and none of this happens with WordPress, a little bit with WordPress that they have been. You know, there's a, there, is a, there are plugins that are going to say, oh, you made a new post, kill the cache for that page. But that's it. And that's way lighter on your WordPress site, which means you can do more with it because they've taken off the weight for you. Now he's got Charles's attention. The best thing that they both agreed about this is the WordPress hosting comes with very special people, people who have devoted their life to doing one very strange thing, and that is answering your questions about WordPress. I'm one of them. I do. I spend all of my time at work either training people on how to answer questions better, listening to customers about how we should be answering questions better, or answering the questions myself. I never leave the trenches because that way I never forget who I'm doing this for. People like me come with managed hosting. Managed hosting specializes with WordPress experts, so you don't maybe have to have that WordPress hero working for you. Now, Charles was out and did worry a little bit, and then he realized, well, yeah, but Charles is still going to need me because these WordPress experts are not consultants. They're not going to help you find the perfect theme and customize it for your site. They're going to be the ones that say, oh, yeah, you know, your site is running a little bit slow. We ran some diagnostics, and we determined that this plugin is doing X, Y, Z, and perhaps you should consider replacing it with something else. They'll help you figure out what broke, but they're not going to be the consultant you hire to fix it. So you're still going to need to consider leaving a little room in your budget for something like that. But this is a sign of reliability that we're going to give people experts and just let you have them. So yeah, Charles is going to have to keep his handy little WordPress admin up there. John. But still, these WordPress experts are going to tell him things like, OK, we figured out what's wrong with your e-commerce website and why it's causing cash not to work as well as it should. And we're going to go that extra step and work with the e-commerce plugins. I'm not making these things up out of nowhere. I have personally worked with other companies who offer WordPress managed hosting. We have put our heads together and then gone to plugin developers and said, hey, these are the problems we're facing. These are the solutions we've had. Can you help us come up with a better one? And the strength of this lies in the WordPress community. Because we are not each other's competitors, we are willing to work together to find a better answer for the users. And that's a hugely important thing. I feel like I should have a Tron picture up here. I fight for the users. <laughs> okay, that worked. <laughs> but then we have the other side of the coin. And we've got someone who's on shared hosting. So we're going to leave Charles' story for just a minute. We'll come back to figure out whether or not he actually decided that that's what he wanted. Sydney is his friendly rival. Like the rest of us, he doesn't really believe in competition because she addresses things in a different way than he does. That's okay. But she was having, she was a little skewed more towards discussion in the first place, which was just fine, up until they announced that David Tennant was going to be playing Mr. Darcy in an upcoming movie. <laughs> they did not. This is not real. This is not real. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Everyone who got really excited about that, I'm really sorry. Um, but she was, off, she was caught a little bit off guard, and then she found out the worst thing is that there were a whole mess of people that got really forked off that they were going to possibly Americanize a story. I don't know if you remember, but about, uh, oh, God, 15 years ago, they came out with an American version of Great Expectations with Ethan Hawke, and it was kind of universally panned. Um, I didn't even really like Great Expectations as a story, and even I saw the movie, and I was like, well, that was not the story. That's not the point of Great Expectations. Uh, but I'm the sort of person that likes Dickens' original ending, where it's a, oh, that's nice, you've changed, I still don't care in the least. I like that kind of, oh, ending that makes you really think about the characters. And, uh, so now we have all these people who have never heard of what a meme is, all of a sudden showing up on a website where they're fairly comic. Basically, Charles and Sydney uh, suddenly had a massive crossover in people because the literary people wanted to discuss what are the changes they're going to make in this movie. And some of Sydney's regulars were like, hey, look, I'm going to make a meme with a great picture of David Tennant. And then how do you merge these two? Well, her real fear was that all oh, these people are going to just crash her server. And they did. She, you know, she had to start looking at paying more money, which she didn't really have a lot of. So what's in between a VPS that basically starts at somewhere, the cheapest I've seen a VPS starts at 30 bucks, a good VPS starts at about $30 a month. 
Most people end up paying $60 to $100 a month. Managed hosting runs anywhere from $20 to $200, just like a VPS can run from about $30 to $1,000. And yes, I have seen a $1,000 VPS server. It's actually six VPSs hooked together the way that they did that. And we finally convinced them that perhaps you want a dedicated server that might be a little better. But still, it's going to be more money, and she knew it. And that was going to be a problem for her. But at the same time, Sydney kind of hit a wall. I mean, I said earlier she was the hands-on kind of girl. She hit the wall of what she knew. She knows how to design a website. She knew how to make her website look perfect. She even knew how to write plugins, not great fancy plugins, but that little stuff that she needed to get done. And when she didn't, she knew how to look through the code of a plugin or ask the right person for help. Hey, is this plugin the one that I want? She relied on her community and she used it to advance what she did, but she did not know servers. And that's a problem when you <coughs> think that you need a bigger, better, stronger server. So she's going to have to look at the VPS as well. Well, if she looks at the VPS, and one thing that you get with the VPS, don't get the managed host as the root access. And I mentioned it before. This is actually a deal breaker for quite a lot of people. Root access is awesome because you can install anything. Uh, I have a VPS where I have uninstalled their firewall and installed one that I like better. I can do that on a VPS. I cannot do that on managed hosting. Is that bad? No. Because I'm trusting these people to have set up a firewall that's going to work well with WordPress. The number of times that I've messed up my firewall and had to unblock WordPress.org to allow updates on my own server should tell you how easy it is to shoot yourself in the foot. I use a config server firewall for those who are just wondering what firewall did I like. The one that it came with was something else I can't even remember. And the website, the web host in question actually gives you directions on how to switch because they know people don't like the other ones. So CSF is also what it's called. I can see you thinking that. <laughs> the other thing that you wanted to keep in mind is what if her plugins aren't going to work on this managed host? What if her plugin is banned on this managed host? And that is a huge problem. There are some managed hosts out there, and I'm not naming names for a reason because there are more than one, who outright state, no, you can't have W3 total cache on this. And there's nothing wrong with them saying that. They've taken care of all of the work that plugin should do. You should never need it. And I love that plugin. I think it's fantastic. I think it's powerful. But just like it's easy to shoot yourself in the foot with your firewall <coughs> like I did, it is so easy to hurt yourself with W3 total cache if you don't know what you're doing. And that's dangerous. So the managed host is going to take the danger away from her, but at the same time, it's going to limit her. What if she really wants to say memcache? And that particular managed WordPress host offers xcache instead. These are decisions that you have to make and trade-offs that you have to understand. But the thing is, is that if you take away the need for you to do all that, you can spend more time with the WordPress community and understand better the plugins and the themes and the setup for your site and manage it better. You're managing what you know, and you don't have to manage what you don't know. Uh, so I wrote this um, before 3.7 was done. And as we all know, before WordPress 3.7, you did not get automatic upgrades for anything. As of 3.7, we get these fantastic uh, incremental updates for minor releases of WordPress, which I personally think is one of the greatest things since WordPress. Um, but managed hosts do one thing better. They'll auto-upgrade your WordPress site major versions. Now, this can be really scary. I know that a lot of people think, wait a second, if WordPress is going to, if they're going to upgrade my site from 3.7 to 3.8, what if this breaks my theme? What if this breaks my plugin? Remember, these guys have the WordPress experts. First off, they probably beta tested the heck out of this stuff, so they know how it works and how it doesn't work. And secondly, they're going to be there to help you. You say, oh my god, this blew up my site. They're going to tell you, hey, don't worry. We took a backup before we did it. Let's just roll you back and see if we can help you figure out what broke. And if this happens every time, you might get really, really lucky and find somebody who's willing to spend an entire afternoon sitting down, pouring over your site, and determining that one of your plugins does not play well with the upgrade script in WordPress and give you a patch to send that to the developer to fix it. And this was not me who did this, but someone did that because that's the level of support that managed WordPress hosting can give. You're not going to get that every single time. You have to understand, you know, there is a limit to how many times we can do these things. But we, the idea is that we're going to try to give you the best WordPress experience because we're banking on WordPress being what we need forever. And also, 
Sydney is your hero for one reason and one reason only. Sydney knows you take good backups every single day. So she knew that the very worst thing that's going to happen with a bad upgrade, she loses one day of work. Everybody's making backups, right? Good. I'm a huge proponent for backups. I think everyone needs to be taking the backup. If you haven't made one today, you can go ahead and log on your computer. The Wi-Fi works really well here. <laughs> And while Sydney understood that managed hosts had to say things for plugins like, no, I'm sorry, you can't have that plugin here, it wasn't really that much of a bother for her to go through their list of plugins that they don't permit because all of them that say you can't have that plugin show you a page that says these are the plugins you can't have and this is why. I haven't found a managed WordPress host yet that doesn't tell you why you can't have that plugin. Uh, if you want an example of a very restricted WordPress managed host, by the way, WordPress.com essentially counts as a managed WordPress host. They take care of all the upgrades for you. They take care of all the plugins. You don't get to install any. That's a little bit stricter than most people really want to go to. But if you think about it, they're upgrading, oh, how many thousands and million sites every time there's a new version of WordPress? WordPress upgrades are pretty solid and pretty stable if you think about it. So clearly the problems that we're going to face are maybe these plugins and plugins that the managed host is saying, I'm not here. So maybe those restricted plugins aren't the best idea to have in the first place. Sydney had kind of had this, her site had catapulted into her career she hadn't uh, actually expected. When she was in school studying sociology and all those fun things that we study when we're young and in college, um, she ended up learning all the stuff about websites instead and running a website where she got to do Talk about sociology, but also learn programming that also interested her. So now, if she goes to a managed host, that cut out a third of what she's doing every single day. She doesn't have to mess with the server. All she has to do is mess with WordPress, which she likes to do. Mess with sociology and go to places and talk about it. And then now, actually, maybe she can go to a WordCamp and come and talk to everybody and say, listen, WordPress changed my life. Because a lot of us here can say, a lot of us here talking can tell you that WordPress changed our lives. It let us quit drab, depressing, boring jobs at banks and be able to do things like this. Not a fake story. <laughs> Sydney uh, also had one really serious concern about proxies, though. You see, um, how many of you have heard of a CDN before? Okay. How many of you have heard of Google PageSpeed? And not the one that tells you how fast your site is running, but the thing you can install. Okay. So Google PageSpeed, for the rest of you, is uh, essentially it's a proxy service that you can install on your server that will cache and minify your scripts, primarily. You can make it do it for images. You can have it minify your HTML. But if you've ever seen this plugin called WP Minify, and it says it compresses your pages so that they're smaller and they load faster, and we all know that smaller pages loading faster is good. Uh, PageSpeed can be installed on a server to do that, but it's what we call a proxy because before someone reaches your website, they're going to go through PageSpeed, and PageSpeed is going to make sure that it has all of your scripts and files and those instead. CDN also acts as a proxy because instead of someone going directly to your website, they go to the CDN first, or maybe they go to the CDN for images. And when you start layering these things on top of each other, we do a CDN and PageSpeed and Varda, we run the risk of your website not looking exactly the way you think it does because you have updated a page and it hasn't flushed with all of those proxies and caches. They can all be made to work together, friendly. It does work. Um, Varnish scared the heck out of me when I found out that people wanted to do page speed and Varnish and then CDN to cache it as well. And I'm like, I heard you like caching with your cache. So maybe we should cache your cache. <laughs> but, after I sat there and I thought, well, this is possibly one of the more foolish things I've ever heard, I realized, no, you know what? I can understand why somebody might want to do that. If you have a more static website, yeah, that makes total sense. We came up with ways and explained them to people on how to do things. For example, you can set up page speed to not tell Varnish not to cache. Because what it, it does by default is page speed says, yo, Varnish, I got this. Don't and that can be a problem because Varnish is supposed to cache. From opposite ends of the hosting spectrum, we have these two people that have to decide at the end of the day, where, is their, where are they going to put their money? Are they going to say, you know what, it's better that I have all of this control 
kind of spend more time managing things? Or is it better if I just hand things over and let the experts take care of it? But when you think about it, it's really elementary, isn't it? It's time for manage hosting. Charles has thought, I don't have to pay for the WordPress ex I don't have to pay for the server expert anymore, which gives them more free time to take on projects that they're really devoted to. Yeah, okay, maybe it's a loss of income that I as the server admin might not be so thrilled about. But there are benefits to these things. I'm no longer paying someone who doesn't know how to do what I am asking them to do. And that does happen. I'm now, I'm now paying someone who knows what I want and is going to take the time to customize a server the way I need it for WordPress. It's kind of basically trading your admin for one admin. And for Sydney, it was accepting the fact that in her life, she didn't want to do this. She didn't want to be the server admin. It's just not fun for her. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the last bit of that, if you've noticed, all the titles have been basically it was best of times, it was worst of times. This is the last bit of that, uh, that whole big, messy paragraph. And I, I left it there in total because basically he was saying it was a time like every other time. Things were different, and they were the same. And it's important to remember that it doesn't matter if you're coming from a share post or a VPS. When you sit down to decide, do I need managed WordPress hosting, the trick was to understand who you are, what you want to do with your time, and where you want to spend the money to get there. So a far, far better thing I do than anything else before is to provide WordPress support, and I try really hard to do that. And uh, I'd like to open up for questions about any kind of hosting. You don't just have to ask about managed hosting. If you want to ask about dedicated or a DPS, or even, you know, what are the dirty secrets that WordPress hosts don't actually want to tell you, I'll tell you. <laughs> Please do. So on a, um, um, a shared hosting environment, typically how many other websites are on your, your same server? Um, at one point in time, I used to liken this to when airlines would overbook and they because they knew that certain people weren't going to make the flight. Um, traditionally speaking, most shared hosts are what we call oversold. There are more people on a server than might be considered the right amount for the server, but there isn't a set number. Uh, specifically, what we do with DreamCoast is we keep an eye on how many processes everyone is using. If we see that there is a noisy neighbor, we'll move them to another server where there are less people so that they don't impact other, other people. Um, every web host is a little bit different about how they decide that you're being the noisy neighbor. Uh, some strictly gauge how, many, how much memory you're using, how much CPU you use, utilizing. But it's not a number of users, it's a number of, it's the amount of usage that all of these users combined are doing that help us decide whether or not we need to start shuffling people around or telling you, hey, you know, your site's getting a little bit busy and you just crash the box, or perhaps you should consider something else. So, 10, 1,000? Um, I have seen a shared server with as few as 50 people on it, and I've seen one with as many as, uh, I think, 1,500. That one had a lot of very small static sites. Um, it, it's not, I'm not trying to avoid giving you a number, there quite literally is a number that is perfect. Also, not every shared server is the same. Uh, I say in another, another talk that your server is a special snowflake. No two servers, <laughs> <laughs> it's true, no two servers are identical because no two websites are identical and no two combinations of users on a server are ever going to be exactly 100% the same. So it's not like we can measure and magically know in advance. What we try to do is predict watching traffic. And one of the wonderful things that uh, I've noticed that we do at DreamHost is that if someone tells us, hey, I just got an article featured on Slashdot, we move you to a better host by yourself so that you don't take everybody else down. So if you know a lot of traffic is going to happen, we keep an eye specifically on you to make sure that you get to what you need. And I know that other web hosts do this as well. Can we hear the dirty secrets, please? Uh, okay, so the dirty secret I alluded it to when I said that we actually expect you to manage your VPS. The number of people that don't know that a VPS and a dedicated server, when you get them 
don't actually come with an expert sitting there ready to help you install software. Uh, it's a really high number of people that never knew that. Uh, I, I knew it when I was getting into it because I read all of the details on it because I'm kind of one of those OCD people that likes to do that. But um, the other dirty little secret that people don't like to know is that we do, all of us, oversell our share posting. We have more people on it than probably, is cons than probably a normal person would consider safe, but it's because of usage. We monitor who is using what, and we try to find the best group of people to live together. It's kind of like when you're in college and you get that first roommate and you don't know if you guys are going to mesh, and the college has kind of done this lottery where they're like, well, these two people don't smoke and they're both vegetarian, let's put them in the same room together. It's kind of like that. And sometimes we miss and sometimes we don't. And sometimes we end up putting you next to the medium smoker who loves cigars and it's just a horrible fit. But we're constantly moving sites around. So, and that's the other dirty little secret is that your site may not always be on the same server and we may not always tell you that we've moved you because we'll see, oh, you know what, this server, just, the memory is failing, let's just move them right away and fix the server. It scares people because your IP address may change without notice, um, which is a horrible thing to happen. And we will tell you as soon as we've moved you, but we have to juggle between these two things. Do we let your site go down? Or do we move you and keep you up? Most hosts will contact you and say, hey, we're moving you right this very second because of an emergency. But if it's the middle of the night and you're asleep and you don't see it until the morning, you may have had some downtime. And we really hate that we do that, but it's one of those things I call it's, it's really a crapshoot. I don't know which is better. Um, we try to assume that we know, we do know what we're doing. And we, do <laughs> we don't assume that we know what we're doing. We do know what we're doing. And we try to assume that we, because we know what we're doing, we know what the best thing is for you because we have spent the time understanding websites and web applications and how they work so that we're not going to break you when we do things. Thank you. Please come up with this mic. This is for the, the mic is needed because otherwise they can't hear you on the video later. If you're moving serve up sites mm -hmm. from server to server, is that only sites you have control over the DNS, the native servers? No, your DNS doesn't matter in the least when we move you from server to server. What was your IP chain? It, your DNS points to a name server, right? ns1.yourserver.com. Right. Okay, so I guess that's the question then. At least at DreamHost, you have to use their, dream, their name servers. You can also use Cloudflare, depending on how you set things up. But when, in general, when you have a name, when you have your DNS set up, you point it to you know, a name, not an IP, and this is why. Because it lets us automatically move you from place to place. But you've got to update the DNS, right? Oh, we update the DNS. Okay. Well, we do update the DNS. No, we're not just going to leave you hanging. But um, it's a lot faster because you're not being pointed to a new DNS server. So mm -hmm. when everybody comes here and says, hey, it says that this site lives at this DNS server, and then they get there and the server says, oh, yes, and that's the IP, that's a lot faster than moving complete DNS. Hi, uh, if you're a novice uh, user of servers, you know how to make a mm -hmm. solid WordPress site, but you know nothing about servers, yeah. what are good questions that you should ask a managed hosting company before signing up with them? Um, the first question that I ask is, I, I ask myself the questions first. I say, today, if a site goes down, what, how do I want to get in touch with my host? Some hosts do not offer phone calls. Um, they offer, some offer call back, some have a 24-7 phone line, some only allow you to open tickets and do chats. If for you, a break point is being able to pick up the phone and talk to a human being, then that has to be top on your list. But it's asking yourself what you want out of a host. The questions that I would ask the host is, um, how many people do you have that, you give, that give back to WordPress core? How many people are being paid to write code in WordPress or support WordPress or give back to the community in some way, shape, or form. Because we're a community that cares about each other and works together, uh, that's really important to know that if some company is not giving anybody back, they're just taking, I'm a little bit more concerned about them because I don't think that they maybe understand how the whole system works. Hi, um, this question is just about, I'm on a shared hosting, so this is really great talk for me to listen to. Um, I've always been a little tentative 
for going for a VPN because not only do I not have some of the answers, as many questions I don't have. So I guess what I'm hearing is if I go to a managed host, I get uh, people who know the questions and the answers. I get some restrictions, yeah. but I really get the help I need um, to to sort of like rest at night, go on vacation, and things like that. So the question I would have is just about a few things. Do they offer services where um, if you're paying the extra dollars, um, do you also have some guarantees uh, that your site does go down? It's a hack that's unrelated, say, to your your own installation, that there's some sort of like help that happens to reinstall and get things back up. Do some managed hosts offer things like that that would make the lead even more attractive to some of the shared hosts? Yes, some managed hosts have partnered with uh, security firms to do scans and to fix uh, hack sites. Also, most of them, I can't think of one that does it off the top of my head, uh, take daily backups for you. And I, I stress this, this is another dirty little secret. We don't expect our backups to save you in a pinch. We expect our backups to bring the server back. It may not have everything that you wanted from your website, which is why I always say, please make your own backups. Regularly test them at least once a month that you know that they're okay. Because our primary concern is that whole server. And it may not be that specific image file of you know your child walking for the first time that we may not have been able to rescue. And we're really sorry about that. but. If we got everything else, then we got a 99% uh, backup. Um, but yes, we do, uh, most of us partner with at least one security firm, some two, to make sure that we figure out what was the hack, how did it happen, how does it not happen again, and restore you as best we possibly can. And one of the wonderful things about WordPress, this is my favorite thing whatever about a hack with WordPress, is that if your site got hacked on WordPress, I'm just going to nuke all the WordPress files and copy them back up, change password. That takes care of 99% of the hacks I've seen. The ones that, that are left are the ones that come back, and that's when we know, okay, somebody has a plugin or a theme that they're installing that has a backdoor, and now we need to figure that out, and we will. And we have, and we will continue to do this, and we will continue to take that information and pass it on to the developers who wrote the code in the first place, or if they're one of those developers who just doesn't care and doesn't want to talk to people and just make money and sell stuff because sadly they do exist, we will try to help you find an alternative theme or plugin that will do what you need without the problems. But I know for a fact that every managed host that I've talked to offers some sort of service like that. Whether it's the service you want or not, you have to consider how much you know about WordPress and what you will need from them. <coughs> do I have time for one more, or is that it? That's it. Oh, that's it? <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> one more? If, if you want to catch, if, yeah, let's do one more, and then we'll call this a wrap, and people can catch me on the outside. Just very quickly, um, is DreamHost taking the position on the use of all 12 pegs for the managed service provider? For the oh, service? I'm sorry, can you? Is, is your company taking the position on the use of auto updates? Uh, my company position on auto updates. If you are using our DreamPress solution, we upgrade you. We have not, we are not turning off the auto updates. We want you to use them because we have two people who are on the core development team, myself and Mike Schroeder, and we have tested that auto-update within an inch of its life, and we think that WordPress did it right, and we would like to continue using it, because while we do have our own upgrader, it's still good to have more than one way to make sure you get that security update really fast. We care more about the security than just about anything when it comes to the updates. We trust Nason. <laughs> uh, so if you guys want to ask any more questions, I will be outside for a little while longer. Thank you.